This video contains content not suitable for viewers who suffer from arachnophobia, entomophobia, ranidophobia, ophidiophobia, musophobia, matrichophobia, chiriptophobia, and lepidopterophobia. Viewer discretion advised. Sealing your house can solve many in-home infestations. Insects and other pests will often enter a home through an unsealed door, torn screen, crack in the foundations or walls. After entry, the pest may inhabit a portion of your home and reproduce. After a pest has infested your home, it can be very difficult to exterminate. So we've compiled a list of the top 42 hated household pests. We'll even show you the best ways to tackle them. Opossums. Opossums sometimes den in attics and garages, where they may make a messy nest. Often becoming active at night, opossums can keep people awake as they move around. They can also destroy poultry, game birds, and their nests. When startled, opossums can bare their sharp teeth and hiss, and in rare cases, may bite if they feel threatened. To make sure your house is protected from opossums, follow these simple steps. Find out where the opossum is getting in and out. Cram loose wads of waste paper into suspected entry points during the day. After dark, the opossum will push its way out, showing you where it gets in and out. Make repairs to prevent entry. This can be done at night when the opossum is feeding. Splash the old entry areas liberally with a strong smelling substance, such as disinfectant. The opossum's scent glands will have marked the entries to its den. If you don't destroy the scent, the opossum will try to re-enter the den. Groundhogs The groundhog, or the woodchuck, is a large furry rodent that is brown with a bushy tail, small ears, short legs, and curved claws. Groundhogs are diurnal, which means they are active during the day and sleep at night. When alarmed, or if predators are nearby, groundhogs will make a high-pitched whistle sound, which is why some people call groundhogs whistle pigs. Groundhogs can be a nuisance to property owners by causing plant damage in gardens, fields, and orchards, and by digging holes to create underground burrows. Burrows they dig near structures can cause foundation damage. On rare instances, a groundhog may invade your home if food is scarce and an opportunity is available for it to enter. Many people try various repellents to get rid of groundhogs, everything from mothballs to fox or coyote urine. However, none of these are effective. The only sure means of groundhog control is trapping and removal. Try calling a professional for the best method. Butterflies Several species of butterfly can hibernate during the winter. Such species tend to look for sheltered areas in which to hibernate, which is why they are sometimes seen in houses and garages. However, an unnaturally warm environment, such as a house that is centrally heated, can be quite detrimental since the butterfly will become active and use up the essential body fats that will see it through the winter. A butterfly in the home is conspicuous, and people might relate unusual happenings that occur after seeing the butterfly to the sighting. Different cultures interpret a visiting butterfly differently, and diverse, even contradictory meanings exist across the world. To remove a butterfly from your house would require an opening in a window or door so it can fly out. It may take some time, but butterflies will fly out, eventually. Praying Mantis Praying mantises generally live year-round, in the warmer parts of the country, and are most often seen in temperate locations during the warmest summer months. Praying mantis are often protectively coloured to the plants they live on. This camouflage facilitates the predaceous behaviour. Mantids are usually found on plants that have other insects around. Some mantis live in grass, 
Winged adults may be attracted to black lights in late summer and early fall. Like ladybugs, the praying mantis is beneficial to a good garden, as they eat a variety of insects including aphids, grasshoppers, fruit flies, houseflies, moths and crickets. Praying mantis are harmless and will on occasion enter your home during hot days. They will often become distracted in houseplants, believing insects to thrive there. A praying mantis will not bite, but may show signs of aggressiveness when it feels threatened. The best way to get it out of the house would be using a small box to lure it in and then releasing outside. Wood lice. Wood lice, also known as roly poly bugs, sow bugs, potato bugs, and pill bugs, are a particularly harmless variety of bugs, and they're not considered to be dangerous. They don't act as carriers for any disease, nor do they bite. However, in your home or garden, they can be pretty annoying and pesky. Normally, damp areas will attract wood lice, but in most cases, wood lice will enter your home by accident, and are sometimes found just wandering around. Wood lice will die in most home environments, as the environment is just too warm and they'll end up becoming dehydrated. Wood lice feed on mold growth, leaves and rotting wood, and they're known to damage wallpaper, which may be due to feeding on minute mold growth, which will cause incidental damage. Wood lice may be found anywhere in your home, but you'll find them most commonly on the ground floor, having entered via poor seals around doors or windows, or through your air vents. Wood lice can, however, live in roof voids and in damp bathrooms and toilets. Ensure that you eliminate damp areas in your home by either heating more effectively or stopping leaking taps or water dripping through poorly fitted worktops, baths, and sinks. Seal as many gaps as you can find with a good sealant and ensure door drought excluders are not damaged. Bats Bats can pose a serious health threat to humans if they are found inside a structure. A small percentage of bats are also infected with rabies, but may not show symptoms. Rabies can be transmitted when saliva or even body tissue of an infected animal comes into contact with another animal or human. Therefore, it is important to seek medical attention if you've had any unprotected physical contact with a bat. Bats can cause damage to structures as they can chew through building materials and also enlarge access holes. Bat urine can cause degradation of flooring, insulation and wood. Urine and droppings on attic floors may seep into ceilings of living areas. This can cause wood to become brittle and many times it's best to have the soiled material removed. Since bats can carry disease, it's important that any contractors who repair bat soiled materials use personal protective equipment such as rubber gloves and respirators that are recommended for use during cleanup. One simple way to remove a bat is open every window and door. This way it will allow the bat to escape on its own. If the bat is not flying, the best precaution will be to wear protective equipment and use some sort of fishing net to lure the bat into it. Then release the bat outside. For future references, ultrasonic bat repellent devices are very effective. They run completely silent to humans, emitting ultrasonic frequencies that interfere with bats' echolocation navigation. While the bats are not harmed by this, it will however aggravate them, seeking out quieter locations. Slugs. Slugs are mostly found in the garden where they can be a real problem for gardeners, but they are often considered a greater problem in the house. Slugs in the home pose little health problems to humans, though they may carry all sorts of viruses and bacteria. They may find their way into your vegetable rack and begin to eat your vegetables, thus spoiling them. Since slugs feed mostly at night, they are often found in your home first thing in the morning. Slugs will enter rooms with moisture and food debris. A persistent infestation of slugs inside a building would indicate that there is a dampness problem that requires attention. Try to draw rooms where slugs are found in large numbers. There are three main ways to prevent slugs entering your home. 
The first way is to create a barrier of some sort. A copper strip or something that slugs do not like, such as crushed eggshells or ash. The second way is slug pellets or salt. The third way is to block all means of entry. Slugs can enter your house through holes in the doorways, in gaps between bricks and through damaged fussiers. These entry points should be discovered and blocked with cement, plaster or wood. Birds. More often than not, birds will accidentally fly through your house and end up getting lost and confused. A bird in the house has often led to rumours and superstitions, much like the butterfly, of good and bad luck, depending on which country you live in. Depending on the species of bird in question, they can create a variety of difficulties. Some of them may eat the crops in your vegetable garden, while the roosting habits of others could cause damage to buildings. If a bird is stuck in your house, try using a broom or mop to coax the bird to a nearby window or door. If the bird is stationary but also stuck in the house, try using protective gloves or some sort of towel as birds' claws are extremely sharp. To prevent birds from entering your house, ensure windows and doors are not left wide open. To stop birds from damaging the outside of your home and property, try either physical deterrence, visual deterrence, sonic devices, barriers or chemicals. If you contact a professional, they have trained birds of prey which will help reduce bird pests. If you own a cat, be sure to check what it is carrying inside its mouth before it enters the house. Snails Snails belong to a group of invertebrates called mollusca. They are found all over the world, and there are numerous different species. Snails live outside in damp conditions, under stones, plant pots, and are notorious for causing damage to plants and vegetation. They are mainly active on dark, damp, cloudy days and at night. Snails need moisture to survive. Snails occasionally enter buildings in search of food and will remain in any areas where damp conditions occur, like a cellar or behind kitchen appliances. A way of detecting that snails are present in your home is to shiny silvery slime trail which may be visible on carpets, surfaces or tabletops. Place copper tape or strips on the floor by doors. This acts as a barrier. They will give snails an electric shock as soon as they come in contact with it. Harvest men. Surprisingly, harvest men, also called daddy long legs, are not spiders. They are mostly scavengers and will often feed on dead insects or decaying organic matter, but also eat garden pests like aphids. Harvest men don't like indoor environments unless they are damp like cellars, unfinished basements, and sheds. You'll rarely find them indoors in living spaces unless there are insects in your vicinity. During warm months, harvestmen are extremely common on the shady sides of buildings, underneath eaves, in crawl spaces, both in rural and urban environments. Granted, they can sometimes be a nuisance if there are dozens of them congregated. But remember, they are not harmful to humans, animals, buildings, or crops. Harvestmen are generally slower than a normal spider and will not bite. So the best way to get one out of the house is to catch it in an empty glass and slide paper underneath. When you are outside, release the harvestman. Weevils Weevils are small beetles that possess conspicuous snouts. They are often light bulb or pear shaped. Adult weevils are attracted to buildings to seek shelter from unfavorable weather conditions, especially when it's hot and dry. These weevils enter buildings by crawling through cracks or openings around foundations, doors and windows. They don't harm people or pets or damage buildings or property or infest food products. They are just a temporary nuisance. Many of the weevils that invade our homes spend the winter behind the insulation inside the walls. The attic, the garage, and the crawl space are also common winter hiding places for weevils. These weevils might spend the winter without being seen by the homeowner. 
Weevils that come indoors for shelter can infest every room in the home. They often cluster in rooms that have windows. They gather at the windows, trying to get outside. Homeowners find these weevils crawling on the walls and ceilings. Removing weevil infestations is commonly done with a vacuum, broom or dustpan. Insecticides are not effective or necessary, but like the good tenants they are, they will leave the house after a few months. Fire brats. Fire brats are similar to silverfish, but prefer higher temperatures and require some humidity. They are found in bakeries and near boilers or furnaces. They feed on a wide variety of carbohydrates and starches that are also protein sources, such as dog food, flour, and book bindings. They're distributed throughout most parts of the world and are normally found outdoors under rocks, leaf litter, and in similar environments, but are also found indoors, where they are considered pests. They do not cause major damage, but they can contaminate food, damage paper goods, and stain clothing. To prevent fire brat infestations, keep basements, laundry rooms, and bathrooms clean and dry. Household dust and debris are also important sources of food, so routine cleaning will help provide effective control. In addition, periodically cleaning out stuffy closets, cabinets, and storage containers will prevent fire brats from entering. Crane flies. Crane flies are harmless, nocturnal, and are often attracted to lights. Crane flies are known to cause lawn damage, but they don't pose a threat indoors. Crane flies may be mistaken at times for mosquitoes or even daddy long legs, but they're significantly larger with extremely long legs, but they never feed on blood. Because crane flies make no noise when buzzing, they can easily spook many people by their appearance as such of a flying spider. To stop crane flies from becoming a nuisance in your house, it's advised to keep window screens sealed and screen doors shut. Scorpions Scorpions live in very dry climates. Despite this, they are very sensitive to loss of moisture from their body and hide during the day in shady locations. Scorpions tend to be found around water sources, so a great place to look with care is around your sink, shower recess, or bathtub in the bathroom, and around similar wet areas in the laundry and kitchen. If you find a scorpion, it's just a matter of covering them with a wide enough plastic container, sliding a piece of cardboard under the container to cover it, and then transporting the guest outside. If you live in an area known for scorpions, it will be wise to purchase a handheld blacklight to check out the outer foundations of the house or sheltered area of the house, such as the basement or crawl space. A scorpion will nearly always stay away from direct sources of light to avoid detection by their predators. In some cases, this can include humans, as some species of scorpions have incorporated into the diet of certain cultures. The best treatment if you expect a scorpion infestation is to remove the areas they can use as a hiding spot. Since most scorpion species are resistant to pesticides, it is best to call in a professional to deal with them if you find you have a serious problem. Furniture Beetles The adult furniture beetle is a small insect 3 mm to 6 mm long, which flies quite readily. It lays eggs on rough, unpolished wood, and the grubs bore straight into the wood, leaving no trace until they emerge as beetles three years or so later. Furniture beetles are also called woodworms. They are frequently introduced into houses in second-hand furniture, tea chests, or wickerwork. But the beetles are quite capable of flying in through a window from nearby dead branches of trees. They may then attack floorboards, joinery, and structural timbers such as rafters and joists. While the common furniture beetle frequently infests wood furniture, it may also infect damp wood in crawl spaces, flooring, wood siding, and other moist areas of the home. 
Furniture beetles and furniture can be cured by applications of special pesticide. Coat all surfaces polished and unpolished and inject fluid into a few flight holes with special injectors. As a precaution against furniture beetles, you can also buy an insecticidal polish. Squirrels Squirrels are common in parks and woodland areas. Although usually an outdoor dweller, it can sneak or scurry into homes, usually the roof or loft space. Squirrels can be destructive, gnawing at facious joists and even wiring in roof spaces. They may also make drays from loft insulation or other materials. Squirrels can often be heard in roof spaces because of their movement and gnawing, usually at dawn and dusk when they leave or return to the dray. Squirrels are incredibly agile and will scale vertical walls to get to their nests. There are many precautions you can take to reduce the chances of getting a squirrel. First is ensure that the fascias and gutter areas are free from damage and holes. Secondly, consult a tree surgeon if trees are leaning against or the branches are touching your house. House geckos. House geckos are tropical and subtropical lizards and are commonly seen near porch lights at night where they wait for insects to eat, such as moths and cockroaches. While geckos are beneficial predators of insects, they may become a nuisance when they move into structures. In addition to being a nuisance, their droppings can stain fabrics, carpets, and curtains. Gecko management should focus on excluding the lizards from the structure. Check and replace weather stripping around doors and windows as needed. Use sealant to close cracks and crevices around soffits and plumbing or electrical penetrations. Geckos commonly use poorly sealed gaps around the home's exterior as hiding places during the day. Brown Marmorated Stink Bugs The brown marmorated stink bug prefers older houses with lots of nooks and crannies for them to shelter in during cold weather. They'll be brought out of their hibernation in the winter months by the heat produced by climate control and will fly inside the house, usually around light fixtures. If you have ornamental fruit trees or garden edible crops, you'll be able to tell if you have brown marmorated stink bugs by the amount of damage done to the plants and fruits. Because of the invasive nature of these pests, eradication and treatment can be pretty tricky, especially inside of the home. The Department of Agriculture has said that some insects may not work as well because of the way these bugs are known to feed. It's advised that the average homeowner should seek professional assessment, if not assistance, in dealing with these pests. Earwigs Earwigs will come into a home through their foraging patterns. They do not often venture into areas most inhabited by humans, being very shy in presence of light. As earwigs prefer a dark, moist environment to hide, they are most common in parts of the home that have both of these things, including basements, under sink areas, in bathrooms, and in storage areas. You can usually spot them on the ceiling or on walls, and they will scurry out of sight rather quickly if exposed to a bright light. Any area that you can expect to have dark, Moist crevices are a potential home for earwigs, such as patio furniture, gardening storage, and window frames. Earwig infestations are best dealt with by determining the entrance points that are being used for them to enter the home. Using repellents will also stop the problem. Silverfish Silverfish are a nocturnal insect and widespread across much of the world. Silverfish are easily spotted when you turn on the light in usually dark areas of the house like a basement or crawl space. They can be spotted when older boxes are moved and you can see small fast-moving gray insects crawling away. 
You can also inspect the bindings of older, less used books in your home for signs of silverfish damage, especially if those books are stored in less used areas of the home. Silverfish will also damage wallpaper if they are trying to get it to paste underneath. As silverfish are nocturnal, they prefer to stay in darker, moist environments and can survive up to a year without food, but are still very sensitive to moisture and temperature levels. Silverfish can be found in ground levels of homes, but can also be found in attics of the home if they are in search of food. One of the best ways to remove silverfish appearances is by fixing leaks under the sink cabinets, basements and bathrooms. House Crickets The main signs of house cricket infestation is the signature sound that the males make to attract the females. The song is high-pitched, repetitive and two-toned, and is the main reason this species is considered a nuisance pest. These crickets will come inside the house through cracks in the foundations and they can be found in basements, crawl spaces and subflooring. They can produce dropping piles that can prove distasteful to homeowners especially if stepped in and they can be spotted fleeing if an overhead light is suddenly turned on. They are a nocturnal species and tend to hide during the day in damp dark areas. They do not always radiate towards human habitation but like most pest species they enjoy the ease of access to food, moisture and shelter. In the home, house crickets prefer to keep to dark sheltered areas outside of the home. The best way to take care of house crickets is to take away their habitat outside and inside of the home. Keep all sources of food and moisture that might lure the crickets inside or sustain a population sealed. If you find that you have a serious infestation, there are many different products on the market that will repel the crickets, but it's always good to make sure that whatever course of pesticides you may undertake has the least impact on the environment inside and outside the home. Ticks. Although most ticks are found outdoors, indoor infestations of the brown dog tick are not uncommon. Some ticks prefer warm, drier locations rather than the outdoors. Once an infestation occurs inside the home, it can grow very rapidly. Typically, a few ticks are brought into the house or from an infested kennel, open field or some other place where infested dogs have been located. After the ticks have engorged on a blood meal, they drop from the host and seek some protected situation in the immediate surroundings. For this reason, they may be found behind baseboards, under windows, in window pulley openings, or within the furniture. All cracks and crevices of an infested premise should be treated for good control. All tick life stages may be found behind baseboards, around window and door moldings, or again within the furniture. Newly hatched larvae can climb, so all cracks and crevices need to be treated. The first step in removing these kinds of ticks is to declutter your home, as ticks will hide almost anywhere. Pick up items from the floor and don't leave your dirty laundry lying around. Use your tick infestation as an opportunity to do a little spring cleaning, if you will. Ticks can often be found attached to dirty clothing or bed linens. Wash any clothes or linens you suspect may be tick infested in the hottest water suitable for the fabric type. Clean your entire home as thoroughly as possible from top to bottom. Clean out the shelves, dust forgotten corners, and sweep, mop, and vacuum all of your floors. Snakes. Most snakes that are found suddenly inside a house tend to be small. This is because smaller snakes can get into the house through small gaps, even under the front door. It's important to treat any snake you see in the house as venomous, as you may not know what kind of snake you're dealing with. It's also important that you should never underestimate the striking distance of a snake. The muscles in a serpent's body are strong and can propel some animals as high as a person's head. Snakes prefer cool, dark places where there is plenty of food. Many snakes like places that are dry and firm. Most of them will seek underground areas where rodents run. 
People often mistakenly create a perfect home for a snake by leaving openings and crawl spaces, wall cavities, and attics. They love firewood stacks, junk piles, retaining walls, and even your gardens. Sometimes you may find a variety of snake species sharing a den, if the conditions are particularly desirable. Often, if a snake is in your home or business, you may not notice it for some time. Most snakes have an eternal behavior, therefore, they aren't out during the regular hours. Once they are in the building, they will travel through the walls between joists and trusses and along pipes. Eventually, you may notice an odor and possibly see snake scat skin sheds or even a full discarded snake skin. A snake should not be handled and the room that the snake is in should be completely closed off until you call for professional help. If possible, place a large bin over the snake and weigh it down so the snake cannot escape. Tree frogs. Tree frogs are common in urban areas where they hang out near lights on walls of houses and catch insects. They will nest and hide behind shutters, undersiding in anywhere away from sunlight during the day. At night, they will emerge to feed. They often poop on walls, take over birdhouses and lay eggs in fish ponds and bird baths. They can enter homes in a variety of ways. They may jump through open doors or windows, be brought into a house inadvertently on an ornament plant, or get into a home's plumbing system through vent pipes on the roof. When tree frogs gain access through vent pipes of a home plumbing system, they usually end up in a bathroom. Some tree frogs grow very large and are known to cause costly power outages by short-circuiting utility switches. Tree frogs have a sticky skin secretion that is extremely irritating to the mucous membranes of people, such as the eyes and nose. The secretions cause a burning and itching sensation that can last for more than an hour. This can be especially problematic for people who suffer from asthma or allergies, in which case full recovery from the ill effects of the frog's skin secretions may take several hours. Therefore, it is always a good idea to wash your hands thoroughly after handling a tree frog. Better yet, wear rubber gloves when handling or attempting to capture tree frogs. Raccoons Raccoons tend to be around double the size of a house cat, with mousy grey bodies and bushy ring tails. Most distinctively, raccoons have black facial markings which look sort of like a bandit's mask. The agile front feet of a raccoon allow it to catch fish by hand, and even pry open the lids of garbage cans, open doors, and manipulate other human constructed objects to get at the desirable food. Raccoons can be annoying creatures to many people, especially if you're trying to grow a garden. However, they can be annoying in more serious situations like pulling shingles and tiles off the roof of houses and even inviting themselves into your home through the pet doors. They really know how to invade your space, and there isn't always much you can do to get rid of them without harming them in any way. Raccoons are a major host of rabies in the US, especially in the eastern part of the country where their populations are increasing. They can cause property damage around homes and outbuildings, especially when they try to enter homes through attics or chimneys, which they are also known to use as denning sites. There are many different raccoon repellents available for use, but the most popular and most effective types are the ones you sprinkle onto the areas where the raccoons are a problem. If you have a pet such as a cat or dog, they may prevent the raccoon from entering your property. Bees have an important role to play in our environment, as they are partly responsible for pollinating flowers and fruit trees. Bees are normally non-aggressive, and will only sting as a last resort. It's important to properly identify the particular species living near your home, as bees are often mistaken for wasps due to their similar physical characteristics. There are different elimination processes for bees, so effective treatment relies upon proper identification. When using any method of bee control, it is also necessary to know how effective application strategies as well as the limitations and dangers associated with each method are. In many regions, special licenses are required to treat infestations. A solitary bee may enter your house upon mistake searching for a nest, or they may enter dehydrated and in search for shade. 
One simple way to remove a bee is to use a rolled up magazine or newspaper and try to carefully edge the bee to an open window or door. While bees can benefit the environment in many ways, it is inconvenient and possibly dangerous to let a beehive thrive near your home. For safety and efficiency purposes, a pest control expert should be consulted before any bee control technique is attempted. Fleas. The flea is a pest insect that is sustained by its primary host, the cat or dog. This is one of the most abundant and widespread kind of flea in the world. If your pet is exhibiting signs of irritation or you see small dark brown specks on the floor around your pet's bedding, your pet may have fleas. A good test is to comb your pet's hair and examine the hairs that fall out on a white sheet of paper. If you see small, moving, black or brown insects, it is a good sign that your pet may be infested with fleas. The most important way to control fleas is through prevention. Simply because it's cold outside does not mean that your pet is safe from infestation. Since many pet animals are at least partially indoor animals, this means that fleas have a year-round protected environment to continue their life cycle. It's best to seek flea and tick prevention from a veterinarian and to treat your entire home if you find or suspect fleas. Urban foxes. Urban foxes are, for a simple term, foxes that have adapted to living alongside people. They're highly efficient scavengers and can find plenty supply of food in today's throwaway society. Although primarily a carnivore, foxes will eat almost anything, including berries, fruit, snails, and slugs. They will never turn away a free meal and are often seen eating from discarded takeaway or general food waste from rubbish bags. Other than denying foxes a source of food or shelter, there is really very little that you can do to control the foxes. If a fox has taken up residence in your property, you could use an appropriate animal repellent, but you should not be tempted to try and poison the foxes, as such an action puts other animals and humans at risk. People who use poisons illegally can face substantial fines and possibly a prison sentence. If you need practical help with foxes, you should contact a pest control professional for advice. Legally, there are only two permitted methods of fox control, cage trapping or shooting. Both methods can only be carried out by a trained pest control professional. It's also important to note that once an urban fox is captured, Releasing them into the wild is illegal because, by law, most pest control companies are actually not entitled to release an animal back into the wild, and to do so may result in persecution under the Animal Cruelty Legislation or the Abandonment of Animals Act. In addition, releasing an urban fox into the wild could very likely result in the animal starving or being chased off by their country brethren. Bed bugs. Bed bugs feed on humans, usually at night when they are resting. This insect feeds by piercing the skin with its elongated mouth part, which consists of four stylets that normally fold under its body when at rest, but fully extend during the blood feeding. In addition to direct injury to humans, bed bugs leave odors and unsightly fecal spots on bed sheets around the insect's hiding places. These spots are usually a reddish brown or a dark brown to black, maybe even sometimes a yellowish, roughly round, or in streaks, and can be very small. Until recently, bed bug infestations were thought to be associated primarily with crowded and dilapidated housing. However, bed bugs have undergone a resurgence in pest status and can now be found in even the finest hotel and living accommodations. The reasons for this resurgence aren't totally understood, but appear to involve increased global travel and commerce, ease of movement of infested items, widespread insecticide resistance, and changes in pesticides available to control this pest. P. 
people may bring bed bugs into their homes, in luggage, or on clothes after visiting an infested dwelling or hotel. If you travel frequently, look for signs of bed bugs in your room by checking behind headboards and under sheets, and by inspecting mattress seams and tufts, especially if you have been bitten. Wash and dry all of your clothes at the hottest settings that your fabric will permit. Mice House mice are considered one of the most troublesome and economically important pests. These rodents eat any kind of food meant for humans, pets, livestock, or any other animals. They also contaminate 10 times as much food as they eat with urine, droppings, and hair. They contaminate food preparation surfaces, which can contain the bacterium that causes food poisoning. Their constant gnawing causes damage to structures and to property. There are many ways to stop mice invasions. First, you gotta seal up any holes you can find. This means virtually any holes around pipes and service cables that enter the kitchen. Mice can access through a gap of less than half an inch, so be very thorough in searching for damaged walls, skirtings, and floorboards. Plug in electronic devices. Plugging in an electromagnetic device can drive mice out of a property. It may take a few days, but it seems that mice get a tingling sensation from the electromagnetic field that's created by these units. If you suspect a mouse in your home, it's important that you act quickly to eliminate it. If left unchecked, a single mouse can produce up to a dozen offspring within a single month. Carpet Beetles Carpet beetles are persistent pests that can cause severe damage to your carpets, clothing, and other fabrics. Carpet beetles are actually drawn to the fabric. They can be found inside of carpets, as the name suggests, especially if that carpeting is in a closet or some other dark location. But they can also be drawn to clothing, upholstered furniture, and items made of fur or feathers. The best way to eliminate carpet beetles is to vacuum your carpet, furniture, and curtains. Inspect the floor and pick up things from it that can be infested by these beetles. Wash everything in warm water. Regular laundering and vacuuming of carpets, linens, and furniture can really help to battle the beetles. Spray liquid insecticide along areas next to your home. Potential entry points like door frames, windows, vents, and utility pipes should be treated to prevent beetles from coming in the property. Moths. Moths fall into two categories, moths that infest foods and moths that infest fabrics. If you're having problems in the pantry or kitchen, you're probably dealing with the Indian meal moth. If your woolens are under attack, however, you're fighting the clothes moth. Moths can be an annoying house guest. They are detected flying about the room or resting on surfaces. Some will also leave webbing, cocoons, and even droppings as evidence of their activity. Some moths will leave their food sources when it is time for them to pupate. The pupae may be seen in corners of cabinets, drawers, or on walls. Regular, vigorous vacuuming is essential for getting rid of moths. Even if you store foods and woolens correctly, moth larvae will feast and thrive on crumbs, pet and human hair, and dead insects. Besides reducing available food, the vacuum is great for catching adults and pulling hard to see moth larvae, eggs, and pupae from carpets, fabrics, and out of reach places. Rats. Rats are well known to spread disease damage property and contaminate food and animal feed. If rats are able to get into your home or business, they can introduce disease-carrying parasites like fleas, lice, and ticks. As they are more active between dusk and dawn, it's often easier to spot signs of the problem rather than the actual rat. 
Rat control is difficult in many cases, but can be achieved using either rat poison, rat traps, electronic devices, or a combination of these rodent control and eradication methods. The main task to achieve in any rat control program is to identify the source of the problem and if that cannot be identified, then you have to eliminate the food supply. Check for broken air bricks and external walls, forgotten holes in brickwork where maybe a new sink or toilet was installed, and pipes running through the wall. Check under the eaves for holes. Internally, check around the whole ground floor to see there it might be a possibility that they came up from under the floor. Pull washing machines, tumble dryers, cookers and other movable items away from the walls and check the flooring underneath and skirting boards. Mosquitoes. The mosquito is known as a nuisance pest and one harmful to humans on a physical level. Mosquitoes are known for their high-pitched signature buzzing sound and for the irritating after effects of their bite. If you have areas where rainwater can collect on your property, it is very important that you empty these regularly. Signs of infestation can be seen easily as wriggling larvae in collected water. If your home is surrounded by a great deal of swamp or marshlands, it is very likely that you will have a mosquito population that will be a nuisance. The species are most harmful to humans on a physical level, however, they prefer to lay their eggs in standing water of any size. The homeowner should treat areas such as bird baths, ornamental ponds and swimming pools with commercially available products. However, the average homeowner should consider seeking a professional advice on the least environmentally impactful methods. Dust mites. Dust mites are microscopic eight-legged creatures, 0.3 millimeters in length and invisible to the human eye. They are arachnids, relatives of spiders, not insects, and are second only to pollen in causing allergic reactions. A primary source of exposure in the home is in the bedroom, which provides the best conditions of warmth, humidity, and food for dust mites. They survive by eating dead skin cells, which make up to 80% of house dust. Getting rid of dust mites is not entirely possible. As a result, the best way is to contact professional help, as they would focus on reducing human exposure to allergens, as well as making the household environment inhospitable to the pest. Cockroaches. Cockroaches can become pests in homes, schools, restaurants, hospitals, warehouses, offices, and virtually any structure that has food preparation or storage areas. They contaminate food and eating utensils, destroy fabric and paper products, and impart stains and unpleasant odors to any surfaces that they make contact with. Unlike many home invaders, cockroaches stay year-round meaning some form of intervention will be needed to keep your home from becoming overrun. Cockroaches are known to be disease-carrying organisms and are second only to dust for causes of allergy attacks in the home. Managing cockroaches is not easy. You must first determine where the roaches are located. The more hiding places you locate and manage, the more successful your control program will be. Remember that cockroaches are tropical and most like warm hiding places with access to water. Some locations may be pretty difficult to get to, but reduction of food and water sources and hiding places is absolutely essential. To be effective, traps must be placed where cockroaches are likely to encounter them when foraging. The best places are at the junctions of floors and walls close to the sites where cockroaches are suspected to be. Place traps in all corners of the room to give you an idea of where the roaches are entering. Termites. Termites cause billions of dollars in damage each year. They primarily feed on wood, but also damage paper, books, insulation, and even swimming pool liners and filtration systems. 
Termites can injure living trees and shrubs, but more often are a secondary invader of plants already in decline. While buildings may become infested at any time, termites are of particular importance when buying or selling a home, since a termite inspection or infestation report is normally a condition of sale. People often confuse winged termites with ants. Termites can be differentiated by their straight antennae, with body and wings being equal signs. Ridding a home of termites requires a special skill. Knowledge of building construction is needed to identify the critical areas where termites are likely to enter. Many of these potential points of entry are hidden and difficult to access. A typical treatment may involve hundreds of gallons of a liquid pesticide known as termiticide, injected into the ground alongside the foundation beneath concrete slabs and within foundation walls. Ants Ants are among the most prevalent pests in households. They often enter buildings seeking food and water, warmth and shelter, or refuge from dry, hot weather or flooded conditions. They may appear suddenly in buildings if other food sources become available or weather conditions change. Ants may be found near food sources, moisture, and in hidden, protected places like wall voids, under appliances, behind window frames, and underneath floors. The two main common types of ants seen in households are the odorous house ants and the feral ants. Regularly inspecting your home for ants or ant entry points is of vital importance. Monitor for ants near attractive food sources or moist areas. Ants may invade kitchens, bathrooms, offices, or bedrooms. Inspect under sinks, in cupboards, and along pipes and electrical wires. Look for large trails of ants or for a few stragglers. Straggling ants are scouts randomly searching for food or nesting sites. When you spot ant trails, try to follow the ants to where they are entering the building and to the nest if possible. Look indoors and outdoors for holes or cracks in foundations or walls that provide entry points to the buildings. Ant baits are the best tool in eradicating ant nests, although bait may not work as well with carpenter ants. Worker ants will take the bait and bring it back to the nest to feed to the queen and larval ants. With carpenter ants, however, insecticide sprays will be the most effective. If the infestation is beyond your control, you may want to contact a professional pest control company. Wasps Solitary wasps in the home can be a nuisance. Daily sightings of wasps in the home may indicate that there may be a nest inside the building and more attention to the problem is required. Searching for and sealing off that point of entry is the best line of defense. Check your house for unsealed vents, torn screens, cracks around windows, door frames, and open dampers. Observe the flight path of a wasp, especially in the morning which may reveal the entry or exit point. In spring and early summer, wasps are attracted to protein foods. Any foods such as pet food, picnic scraps, should be removed or covered. Wasps imprint food sources and will continue to search an area for some time after the food has been removed. In late summer and early fall, the wasp food preference turns to sweet. Their behavior is also more aggressive cans of pop, fruit juice, and other sweet food sources will attract wasps. Wasps are also incredibly dangerous because of their sting. If stung, the wound should be washed with water, which helps remove some of the venom, and should be treated with an anti-sting product or antihistamine cream, which can reduce the pain and spread of venom. If an allergic reaction occurs, seek medical attention immediately. Symptoms of allergic reaction may include difficulty in breathing, dizziness, and nausea. One symptom that should alert people that they may be having a reaction is feeling very tired. If you are stung and need to go to sleep, it is vital importance to seek medical help immediately.
flies. House flies serve as carriers of disease agents due to their predilection for feeding on animal wastes, garbage and human foods. House flies are known to carry bacteria and viruses that cause conditions such as <clears throat> diarrhea, cholera, food poisoning, yaws, dysentery and eye infections. It's only when they appear in large numbers that they become a cause for concern, and this is usually the case for one of two reasons. Either there is infested food matter somewhere nearby, or there's the carcass of a dead animal in which the flies have laid their eggs. Sanitation is the most effective and important step in reducing pest numbers. Dry and wrap organic waste before placing it in the garbage can. A flying insect spray can be used to treat the affected room generally. For areas where the cause is found, a powder or a crawling insect spray can be used. Other means of treatment include traps, which can be hung up, solid block insecticides in plastic vented containers, and ultraviolet electric killers. House centipedes. House centipedes are probably the most disgusting terrifying pests you can find in your home. Many people think they're much scarier than spiders because of their revolting, hairy appearance and the breakneck speeds at which they can run across the room. If handled roughly, some larger species can inflict a painful bite that can cause pain and swelling, similar to a bee sting. House centipedes are most commonly found in damp basements, crawl spaces, bathrooms, or potted plants. Usually the reason for repeated house centipedes encounters is that you have other pests inside of your home. For common house centipedes, setting sticky traps can actually be a way to accurately gauge centipede population levels. This activity will also help to identify potential routes of access within your home. If an infestation is confirmed, homeowners should try to reduce moisture and seal entry routes to the house or dwelling. Moisture in a home's foundation can be a problem and can lead to an infestation, as can water accumulated from the roof. Keep leaves, wood, compost, and any other organic material away from the sides of the home or building. Spiders. Spiders love to take advantage of any area in the house that they can find to live. House spiders have a difficult time surviving in modern homes due to low humidity and fewer insects for food. They're more likely to prosper inside of structures like garages, sheds, barns, and warehouses. Outside, these domestic spiders are often seen around windows and under leaves, especially near light sources that will attract prey. All spiders are venomous, but their venom usually is not strong enough to be dangerous to humans. In fact, having the right spiders around can actually be a good thing, as they eat insects that can be annoying, such as the dreaded mosquito. Spiders scare a lot of people, including myself. Often they're suddenly spotted climbing up a wall or across the floor in your home. While many homeowners would be perfectly happy to never ever see a spider again in their home, there's actually a good reason to have spiders around in that they will eat other bugs and insects. But to prevent spiders from entering the home, it requires good housekeeping, both inside and out. Keep boxes, old equipment, and other items neatly stored on shelves particularly in garages and basements. Make sure you clean up and dispose of trash, debris, old equipment, etc. Repair screens and maintain the weather stripping around doors and windows. Inside of the house, spiders and their webs can be eliminated using a broom or vacuum cleaner. 